Hi everyone, my name is Shen Hao, and for the first physics lesson, I want to talk about functions really quickly. So the reason why I want to talk about functions is because they appear all over physics. Um, in fact, all of physics is described by functions, and I want to talk about these a few classes of functions because in future when you see things like vector fields, I want you to realize that they're just a type of function, and there's nothing to be scared of when you see things like vector fields. Um, yeah. So in general, functions are just a map from a set A to a set B, right? These sets can be anything. They can be, for example, real numbers. They can be triplets of real numbers, which we call R3, right? Three copies of R. Or they can even be complex numbers. Or even more exotically, right? If you go to in to theoretical physics, they can be the set of points on the surface of a donut, which we often call the torus, the T2. Um, and what I want you to realize is that uh, for most of physics, at least for the undergraduate physics and physics Olympiad, we'll be dealing with these two, these two sets. Because uh, roughly speaking, right, there are, few, there are few exceptions later you'll see, but real numbers roughly can describe time. Right? Time is a number, is described by a single real number in terms of seconds, let's say. And R3, triplets of real numbers, right? They usually describe a point in space. So for example, x, y, and z coordinates of some point. And if we and so now we talk about we we'll look at a few we we'll look at a few uh examples of such classes of functions between R and R3. So the first class is from R to R. And they can for example be described, they can be used to describe a particle's x coordinate, right? Let's say we're talking about 1D dynamics, 1D kinematics. We need to know the particle's x coordinate, the position. It can also be used to describe the velocity and the acceleration. There are also other examples. For example, if we want to describe a, the current flowing through a circuit at some point in time, right? That's also described by a rail-to-rail -rail function. And yeah, in general, th this is just some examples, but there's a lot of them. So let's move on to the next one, R to R3. Um, R to R3, an example would be, a straightforward example would be the particle's path, right? If we want to describe how the particle move through space-time, right? Then one way to describe it is by using time to parameterize this curve, meaning that I'm going to ask the function S, right? I'm going to ask the function S, Hey, I give you a point in, I give you a value of time, t equals to two seconds, and the function s is going to give me three real numbers, x, y, and z, corresponding to the x, y, and z coordinates of the particles, uh, the, of the particle at the point, at the, at the point in time. So in other words, I give the function s, I give the function a real number, and it gives me three real numbers. And what this function represents is the particle's path throughout space as a function of time, meaning that it traces out um, as you vary time, right? The particle's three-dimensional location, three point in 3D space, the particle's location can change over time, and that path describes um, its trajectory. Examples of functions from R3 to R could be gravitational potential. We'll talk about we'll see this um when I talk about uh, multivariate calculus as well. And what this means is that the uh, function phi describes the gravitational potential. Um, and what this means is that I'm going to ask the phi, I'm going to ask phi. I give you three real numbers. And phi is going to give me back one real number. So how it does that is it eats in the three real numbers. It performs some calculation, right? Some symbolic calculation, some numerical calculation you see on the right hand side and this calculation is going to spit out a single real number and that real number represents the gravitational potential at that point in space. Uh, it could also represent temperature. So for example, I asked the temperature function, hey, what's the temperature at r equals to, at, at x, y, z equals to uh, 0, 1, 2? And this temperature function is going to say the temperature at 0, 1, 2 is say 100 Kelvin. So there's examples of functions from R3 to R. And here's where we talk about vector fields, right? Uh, functions from R3 to R3, they are they can be used to describe vector fields or 
even uh, yeah, or force fields, for example. And what this means is that, for example, I ask, I, I give the gravitational force function three numbers, right, x, y, and z. It's going to give me three numbers in return. And these three numbers are going to be calculated in a certain way. And what these three numbers that it returns represents is the vector at that point in space. So in other words, functions from R3 to R3, right, vector fields, right, they vector fields associate for every point in space a vector. And a vector is kind of like an arrow. So imagine for all of space, right, every single point in space, the infinitely many points in space, the each point in space has an arrow attached to it. The arrow could perhaps tell you the force right, that a particle will experience if it was placed at that location. Then if I put a particle at the location and I let it go, it's going to want to follow the, it's, it's going to be pushed by the force to another point in space. And it's going to push, and, and another point in space is going to have another vector associated with it. It's going to have another force. It's going to get pushed around, get pushed around, and it's basically going to follow some flow throughout space. And um, that's basically dynamics. But yeah, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. And I just wanted to use these examples to tell you um, in, in general what kind of functions arise in Physics Olympiad. And roughly speaking, these are the four classes of functions. And there are many more as we come along the way. But yeah, but th these are just some examples. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to perform calculus, right? Single variable calculus and how to differentiate functions.